gonna make it back. All right. So, guys, remind me. How do you solve something like this? Here? find the LCD. And then there were like two methods you could do. You could just multiply the LCD, but the way that I wanted to get you guys to see, which will help us with what we're doing today, is to first make everybody the same and then multiply by that LCD. So how do you make everybody 30? This guy needs six. He's good. So then if I multiply by 30, All the bottoms cancel, yeah. So I'm left with 24x minus 20 equals 7. Does it look a lot better? You move the 7x. You move the 7x. Yeah, so you can subtract 7x, add the 20, and divide by 17, and get x of that. Right, how's that? It's not too bad, right? Of course, it's when the bottoms are all numbers, actual numbers, right? So, what do we give uh, the bottom numbers that we don't know yet? We bring in variables. We do the same thing. So, if I had uh, 5x over x squared minus 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 what, Jeff? I don't know, man. You can do it. Sure. I gotta remember what the hell it was. <laughs> Can you do it? Yes, that's right. Alright. So you'll notice something quickly about these problems. This isn't always exactly true, but there's there's almost always a hint. And this is more than a hint. Right? How do I factor this? Yeah, and of course, don't just do it like it's true. Take a second to make sure it's true. So sure enough, 4x minus 13x is negative 9x, and 4 times negative 13 is negative 52. Do you guys see that? Alright. Or don't even think about that. Just factor this, and then you'll see they're the same. So then the LCD is So what's he need? Uh, he needs a who? X minus 13. X plus 4. So everything I've done so far is legal because I'm doing the same thing to the top and bottom. Can you please explain why? How did you get 17x from the first one? The first example. Oh. Oh, here. I'm sorry. So I subtract 7x, subtract 7x, add 20, add 20. Right. I could have just subtracted 24x, but I went with the first thing I heard. Is that cool? Okay. Um, all right, so ready with that. This is an idea that I've tried that we've already used, uh, and that's why it's so beautiful. Solving equations uses that same idea, it just goes a little bit further, of course, because now I have an actual equation. I should end, I'm not done until I get x equals a number or no solution or something. All right. So, uh, what do I do now? Yeah, multiply everything by x plus 4, x minus 13. So, it's going to cancel. And again, exactly why am I allowed to do that here? There's two sides. So in the last section, I had a top side and a bottom side. So I could multiply both sides, it balances out. Here, I don't have that, but I have an equal side. I have two sides of an equation, so I can it balances out on both sides. So if that wasn't there and the instruction said simplify, you can't kill the denominator, right? But the minute you see a glimpse of hope, we can kill the fractions. You want to do it everywhere. I don't blame you that much. 
but you'll still lose points. So don't do that. Uh, so then what am I left with? When I cancel all those out, I'm left with 5x equals, I'm sorry, plus, and that looks immensely better than it did to start with, right? Now, real quick word, before you keep going, I already know from the beginning what x's don't work. What x's would not work? 13. 13. Minus 4. Negative 4. So if either one of those comes up in the answer, I've got to throw it out. Now, a really good thing I want to talk about right now, real quick, because this is where students start to really, really not like math, is when you're like, I did everything right, and then the math answer it gave me was wrong. Screw your math. And I'm like, all right, I understand. It's not math's fault at all. It's not math's fault at all. If we did, at the very end, if we got x equals negative 4, if that's what we did, at the very end, after we solve all this, we got this, well, we could, it can't be. So the answer would be no solution, right? That's what we have to do. But then you're like, why the hell did math tell me this? Because what if x is negative 4, what did we just multiply by? What did we just multiply both sides by? What's x plus 4 if x is negative 4? Zero. zero. Are you allowed to multiply both sides by zero? No. Did we know it was zero when we did it? No. So do you understand now? This is not math being evil. This is math going, hey, you couldn't do that. And we're like, oh, shit, we didn't know. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are with me or not. When I multiply both sides by this, if x comes out to be negative 4 at the end, I actually multiply by zero. I'm not allowed to do that. But I didn't know. I didn't know. And this is just math kind of telling me. This is the only way math has of telling me, dude, that's, not, that's bogus. This is the only way it can tell me is give me an answer that doesn't work. Oh, okay, thanks, man. Who didn't know? Right? Now, this, I'm kind of being silly, but not really. I want you to realize this is, this is what's called an extraneous solution, which is pretty much what it says, an extra solution that doesn't work. And, th and this happens in a few different places, and the students are just like, another place I get an answer that doesn't work after all this shit I did? Well, we didn't know until we get to the end. So see what happens. We're probably not going to get that. I don't know. How do I keep going here? 5x is a 1. Yeah, so you get 8x minus 39 equals 2x plus 8. And subtract 2x. Add 39. 6x equals 47. So x equals 47 sixth, which at least is not one of these, right? So I don't cross it out. You can check it if you want to. But the very least you have to do is make sure it doesn't freak anybody out. You have to check your answer for these kind of problems because you could get an answer that makes it undefined. And again, it's not math's fault. It's the best math can do for us when we're doing something illegal that we didn't know was illegal. I'm sorry, officer. I did not see that no U-turn sign. When I first moved to California, I'm like, can you U-turn anywhere here? Shit. Sorry. If you drive, you know what I mean. It's like you're going the wrong way, you're stuck that way for the rest of your life. So it's too bad for you. Anyway, oh, wait, you yeah, I'm like, oh my god. Uh, all right. Is everybody decent with that so, idea? Yes. Let's say we got negative four. X equals negative four. So yes. we just circle that or just be saying no solution? No, you would cross through it, no solution. So you might, at the end of a problem, you might get two answers. Depending on, I mean, I'm very, if I would have put an X here, I would have gotten a quadratic, right? So then I could have gotten two answers. One of them might work, the other one might not. Both of them might work, both of them might not work. Kind of with me? We've seen that kind of thing before. So yeah, that could happen. Okay, cool. I like it. So you can get a solution, you can get several solutions, you can get all real number solutions, or you can get no solution. Just like any equation. Kick ass. All right, maybe, maybe. So here, you guys try this one.
So what's the first step? Mm -hmm. No. Yes, exactly. Factor what you can. Cool. And of course, it's awesome. So done for you. Don't expect that always, but most of these problems, that's going to happen. Yeah, so he needs x plus 5. He needs x minus 5. Multiply all by. And then multiply everything by x plus 5, x minus 5. So it's going to cancel everywhere. Multiply both sides by that. So the step I just did with this, I hope you understand. If I want to be technically correct, I'd have to put it here, and here, and here. That's what I'm doing. I'm multiplying everything by that. Is that cool? I just don't want to write that much. You don't want me writing more than I already do. It's bad. Oh, it's close on that. Uh, so here I just have 4 plus... Cool. And that is nice, right? So you'll get... X plus 19 equals, right, subtract 2x, like it's in, so x is negative 29. What could x not be? 5 or negative 5, and it's neither one of those. Alright. Now, the thing with uh, getting more than one solution, I have to be a little careful right now, because we officially have not talked about uh, quadratic formula yet. I know a few of you guys know it. In fact, all of you should have seen it by now. But you should not officially get anything with it because it's the book we haven't talked about yet. Officially. Uh, so let me, sh I'm going to steal one from the book that's got a couple answers, or at least the possibility of a couple answers. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's see, is there a more interesting one? Uh, no. Alright. Just deal with it, Jeff. Alright. Here's the problem. You guys try this one. That's a little freaky. Oh. Catch up to you. So you guys might realize you could like combine these, but it doesn't really help you out too much. Uh, and we're talking about cross multiplying here in a second. You gotta be careful with that. Uh, you gotta be careful, don't overlap it. Because people try to use it in places you can't really use it. And then things get bad. Of course, how do you factor this? 
That's your LCD. Nice. So then he needs key or she, I can't tell. And then T minus 2, T minus 2, multiply by T minus 2, T minus 2 everywhere. So it cancels there and there and there. All right, is that cool? So then you get yeah, 5T minus 10 plus 3 T squared minus 16 equals 4. Okay, move the whole First, combine like terms. Yeah. Is everybody all right? Everyone's saying a bunch of different stuff. I know. I heard my least favorite word there a second ago was confuse. Is everybody all right? All right. Uh, combine like terms. Yeah. So get your like terms. Yeah, let's see. 3t squared. Minus t. Minus t. Minus t. Minus 4t. Minus 4t equals 0. Is that cool? Now again, let me just say this again, just because. It could be true that just about everybody understands what's going on. If you look around and you're not sure what's going on, you look around and you see all these people like nodding their heads, it's really weird. Sometimes they nod their heads and they really don't mean it. For some reason they want me to think that they're okay. I don't understand that. Trust me, that happens all the damn time. So don't sit there and go look around. Everybody's like nodding. Everybody understands except me. No, screw that. If you don't understand something, at least eight other people don't. Also, so don't feel bad raising your hand. And dear God, if I hear somebody go, oh, if somebody asks a question, I'm going to kick you the hell out. Right? That's not where this is. What this is for? Be happy if you understand it, and just keep it to yourself. Uh, but definitely speak up with something weird. Now, forgetting everything else, it doesn't matter where how I got here. What matters is now that I'm here, what do I do? So if I gave you that problem, what would you do? Good. I'd factor it. I love it, which is really why we subtracted 4, because I knew I had a squared, and I know when I have a squared variable, I have to get it equal to 0. Kick ass. Make it maybe. So then you get 42. Negative 7 and 6. Negative 7 and 6. I like it. 3t squared. Minus 17, plus 16, minus 14. Yes, sir. Uh, I get 3t squared uh, plus 6t. Is that okay? Like, look at the order. 3t squared. Yeah, you get plus 17. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you meant up here. You mean, okay, yeah. yeah. These, these two numbers will work, period. And they just become what the middle term is, so it doesn't matter what you're putting out. Now, real quick, uh, and that's not wrong at all. But where people make the easiest mistakes is when this is a minus sign. I don't know if you've noticed that or not. So if I have an option, I always put the negative first, to be honest, because then it's easier when that's a plus sign. It's just as easy. I'm not sure if you've noticed that yet or not. But technically, it doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer. It's kind of nifty. Are you guys cool with that fact? If I put 7 here and 6 there, I'm going to get an answer. If I turn these around, I'm going to get the same damn answer. But let me point out what would happen. So you, you finished it that way? Mm -hmm. Good. You, uh, so what comes out of here? T, T, 3, 2 minus 7. What comes out of here? 2. Now, now let me say this. I'm not done factoring yet, right? But look, what's inside? 3T minus 7. For you, what was out here? 3T minus 7, right? Outside for me is T plus 2. What's in here for you? T plus 2. So at the end, we're going to agree, but because you changed a different order, then the answer showed up in a different order, but who cares? It's still the same answer. I don't know if you guys Did anybody else do that when you put the 6 first? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? So you have T plus 2 inside, don't you? But I knew that the signs have to change because the second sign will change the third sign. Oh, yeah. So if there's a minus there, yeah. Good. So I like it. I like it. But do you notice how... You know, I've got a degree in math, so I should be really, really good with this shit. But I still know what will cause me to make mistakes more often, so I avoid it. So I don't care how good anybody is with math. We're human. We make mistakes. I don't care how good you are at anything. So I, there's places where I just don't go because I know I'm going to make. Uh, I have a good chance to make a mistake or a better chance. 
Um, not good or else, you know, what the hell am I worth as a teacher? But a better chance. How do I finish this out? The factory? 3t minus 7, t plus 2, and then how do I get my answers? Yeah. Equal to 0, so add 7 divided by 3. So t is 7 thirds, or negative 2, and then I just circle and I'm done, right? Yay! Sarcastic sounding, yay. What are you supposed to do at the very end? Check them. Do either one of these freak something out? No. If this would have been positive 2, then that would have freaked out, right? But we're actually good because it's negative 2. Hopefully it's negative 2. should be. Blah, 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 yeah. Cool. But you just take a second at the end and double check. You don't have to show me anything unless something doesn't work. If something doesn't work, you, you, you cross through. That's fine. Um, so do you always have to, because I didn't do like the middle step where you did the 3t minus 7t plus 6t minus 14. Oh, I so just factored you, that. You do trial and error method or something? Yeah, and then each one equal to zero. Can I just do Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, and again, if you do trial and error, I have to see some work somewhere. <laughs> Right? Some, sometimes they're easy to do, but sometimes there should be some work that I see. So if everything just suddenly becomes factored, I get a little worried about where it's coming from. Okay. Cool. That's not too bad, right? So what about cross multiplication? Uh, so let me show you where cross multiplication comes from, and let me show you where it gets you in trouble. So the minute students learn about cross-multiplication, they want to do it everywhere. So, for example, I'll have students that I give them two-fifths times three-sevenths, and they tell me the answer is 14 over 15. Look at that. Where'd that come from? What the hell? Right? Don't do that. That doesn't make any sense. But they start to get confused about the only place where cross-multiplying is a valid method at all is if I have a fraction equals a fraction. Yeah. That's the only place. There are other places you could do things related to cross-multiplying. I do it all the damn time, but you have to adjust it a little bit, and that requires you to be comfortable with the hell you're doing. So this is the only place you can use it. So here, now why does it work, though? What would I do if I didn't look at it like that? Well, what's the LCD? 35. So this guy needs a 5, right? This guy needs a 7. And then I can multiply both sides by 35, right? So the shortcut is the 5 just comes up there. And the 7 just comes up there. You see, that's why cross multiplication exists. It's a shortcut to the method we've been doing already. It's the same method, it's just a shortcut when you're in this specific situation. How are we doing so far? So it looks awesome, right? I have 5x equals 21, x is 21 over 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's where it kills you. Here's where cross multiplication kills you. So if I had a problem like, you know, sort of like the last problem too, um, in fact, I'll do that sort of here. If you cross multiply, can anybody tell me why that's a, that's not a smart option here? It's not a Because these bottoms, the bottoms share something. So if you, if you cross multiply, you're going to end up with a quadratic equation, right? You're going to end up with a squared. It's going to be more complicated than it ever had to be. Because how do I, how should I do this? And if you factor this, what do you get? So what's he missing? A single t minus 2, right? This whole thing didn't have to come up here. Just the part that he was missing. So that's when you got to remember, cross multiplication is a shortcut that doesn't always actually work the best. Only when the bottoms actually don't really share anything. Then cross multiplication makes sense. So here I'm going to get, if I multiply both sides by t minus 2, t minus 2, I just end up with 
2t minus 4 equals 5. Wow. Now, if I cross multiply, this is not really a mistake in the sense you're going to get the wrong answer. It's a mistake in the sense you're going to make the problem so much worse than you really had to. If I cross multiply, if I did that, two, I get 2t squared minus 8t plus 8 equals 5t minus 10. Is that cool if I cross multiply? You, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. And it'll work. You get 2t squared minus 13t uh, plus 18 equals 0. Then you got to factor that. And what's going to happen is one of your answers is going to be 9 halves. And the other answer is going to be 2. And then it won't work. So let's see if that happens. How do I factor this? 36 to make 13, negative 13. 9 and 4, I like it. Both negative, is that cool? You guys with me still? You're all looking this way, that's a good thing. Uh, and I rewrite the middle term. I'm just doing this real quick, just to, I wouldn't do it this way, I just want to show you what this way looks like. That is not an option, but I mean, you could do that, but don't do that. Um, then what, what can I take out of here? See, can you already see the answer coming out? Take a negative two. So I get t minus two, two t minus nine equals zero. So I get t equals two and t equals nine halves, but t equals two it can't happen. So I gotta cross through it. Look at all the extra work I did just to get an extra answer that doesn't work. Do you guys understand? So be careful about loving cross multiplication too much. Right? That sounds like a weird Dr. Phillips. <laughs> Talk to many love cross a little too much. All right, that's a weird place to go. Uh, so yeah, you get this extra answer, and you get this worst problem. And in fact, you can imagine uh, a worse place where they have like a T up here and a cube, and you end up with a problem with like a fifth power in it. We didn't even know how the hell to do that shit, right? That's pre-calc. When you get the pre-calc, you learn how to factor like almost anything, I think, right? If you're going there, that's a new future. For us, we don't want that to happen. Okay. Uh, let me see. Was there something else? I think that was it. Yeah. All right. So that's seven six. It's, it's just that. That's seven six. Right? So there's some cross multiplication, but mostly it's LCD and then kill the bottoms, and then you got a much nicer equation. Just don't forget at the end, you got to check your answer, make sure it doesn't make it undefined, right? So now we finally make it to the one we've been waiting for. Yes. It's about the end time, we had some word problems. Word problems are a little bit better than just your average variety of word problems. There's a definite structure to them depending on the kind of equation. So we're going to see some distance rate time problems. Oh yeah. And there's a definite structure to them. We're going to see what's called, the first thing we're going to do is what's called work problems. And this would be something like uh, if I can uh, mow a lawn, so Jeff can mow a lawn, Make an E jump. Jeff mows a lawn in two hours. Uh, Joe Bob mows a lawn in three hours. How long would it take us to mow a lawn if we work together? Right? Assuming that we don't uh, fight with each other or stop and have beers or something. How long would it take us? to mow that lawn together. So uh, what's the most obvious thing about the amount of time? Could the amount of time it takes us be four hours, for example? Yeah. Could it be four hours? Mm -hmm. If we work together, it has to be faster than either of us alone, right? So I know the answer should come out to be less than two. By myself, I could do the damn thing in two hours. Even if this guy totally slacks off, he's gonna do a little bit of something, please, right? 
What are we doing? And let's not assume he destroys his lawnmower and has to fix it and that makes more time. No, no. This is assuming everything's ideal. So here's the way to do a work problem in general. Uh, I, I like doing it this way. The book, I think, does it a little bit different. I can mow one lawn in two hours. If I work with Joe Bob, he can mow one lawn in three hours. So together, we can mow one lawn in I don't know how many hours. Conceptually, the way the book explains it actually makes more sense, because the concept is kind of lost here, but I like that way for setting up the equation. But if I multiply both sides by x, Half a lawn in X hours, a third of a lawn in X hours, so the whole lawn gets mowed. I don't know how, I can solve for X to figure out how many hours that is. So that's the idea, that, that's the conceptual idea. The fractional part of a lawn I can mow in an hour, and the fractional part of a lawn he can mow in an hour. So how much time will it actually take us for that to equal one whole lawn? I don't know if that makes any sense at all. But personally, I like the setup is very easy if I do it like that. One job in two hours, one job in three hours together. How long one job takes us, I don't know. I don't know the time. So on the bottom is the time, on the top is the one job we're doing, whatever the job is. So how do I solve this? Sum the denominator. Sum the denominator. And let me show you, since this is a simple problem, uh, if, if I just immediately just multiply by, uh, well, I should have asked you, what is the LC? Six. Six. All right. Uh, if I just multiply by 6x, which is a completely valid way to do it, you can see what happens. And the reason I don't really show you this from the beginning is some people get a little confused about what happens. I'll, I'll see weird things happen, like I'll get somebody have 6x over 12x and something weird. Right? But what, what happens here is the 2 goes into 6 3 times, so I get 3x times 1, I get 3x plus 2x equals six. six, good, yes. So I get five x equals six, so I get x is six fifths. Six fifths, six fifths of what? Six fifths, hours. hours, good. Please, Drian, we all know word problems have to have units. I'm gonna be a complete dork if you don't put units. I'm gonna put years, decades, I'm gonna be a real jackass. Right? You just got to deal with it. Too bad. Tell me units. That at least tells me you understand what the hell you just did. A little bit. What sucks is if you're able to get the number, but you have no idea what the number means. And people don't understand that understanding what the number means is also a part of math. Math is not just 2 plus 3 is 5. Math is what the hell is that 5 mean? That is a part of math, too. All right, cool. How do we feel about that kind of problem? Yes, sir. Is there any way you can convert that to uh, minutes here? Oh, sure, of course. So, six fifths of an hour, if I made that into a uh, mixed number, what would that be? One hour, twelve. One and one fifth hours, right? Now, watch, watch. There's one hour, one fifth of an hour, but how many minutes is in an hour? Sixty. So, it's one fifth of sixty minutes because it's one fifth of an hour, right? And what's one fifth of sixty? Twelve. Twelve. So, this would be one hour. 12 minutes. So if you said uh, 3 tenths of an hour, you do 3 tenths times 60, because an hour is 60 minutes. And that would be 18 minutes. I like it. Good. Good question. Because you're right. I'm going to say, I'll be there about 6 fifths of an hour. Who are you? <laughs> Alright. Alright. So let's talk about distance rate time. What's the formula for distance rate in time? I distance equals just multiply rate times. Yeah. Dirt, right? D E R T. D equals R T. I hate the chart. Uh, you don't have to do the chart. I'm actually gonna use the chart. But if you don't like the chart, you actually don't need to use it if you can figure out another way to do it. The reason I personally like showing the chart is because it's a good organizational tool. Very often these problems involve two things. They either involve two people, right? Like uh, uh, Billy Joe Bob left uh, two hours before you did, 
how fast you have to go so you catch up to him before he gets over there. You, you understand what I'm saying? So there's two people, or you go to your house and, and you're going this fast, and then you realize you forgot something, so you go back to your house 10 mile an hour faster. How long did the whole trip take? So, you with me? So, and then there's two parts of a, of, a, of a trip. So very often there's two parts, so there's double the information. So the chart is kind of a nice organizational tool. All right, so, uh, for example, let me take one out of the book here so I don't get freaky results. Freaky deaky is exactly right. Uh, let's see, so let's see, a tugboat goes 10 mile an hour in still water. Oh, my favorite word. It travels 24 miles upstream, upstream, and 24 miles back, and a total of five hours. What's the speed of the river, the current? So obviously, hopefully you understand that if, my, if I can paddle a boat, like a kayak, I can paddle my kayak at uh, three mile an hour, but there's a current with me that's five mile an hour, overall I'm going eight mile an hour, right? Anybody here kayak at all? All right. Have you ever seen, if you turn your boat around, you can actually paddle the exact speed so that you're sitting still, because the water's going three mile an hour that way, you're going three mile an hour that way, so you're just sitting in the same place. This is exciting. It's a good workout. It actually is kind of exciting. So, uh, shit, how the hell do I do this? So here's why I like the chart. It, it kind of helps us put things in a place. I can see what I know and what I don't know. So the way this, uh, and again, if you really hate the chart, you can come see me. We can figure out another way to do it. I put the formula up here. Distance is rate times time. And again, this is, uh, again, if you have a different way you do this problem, it's awesome. This is just a way that somebody came up with that we could use if we want to. If you don't like it, you got a different way to do it, kicks ass. So here I'm going to label what these two rows mean. So what are my two situations? The water and... No. Upstream and Upstream and downstream. Cool. Now, what's my unknown? X. Good. That's what I'm going to use for it, but what is it? Speed, speed, of, speed of the current. And I can go 10 mile an hour by myself, my little boat. So if I'm going upstream, are you guys familiar with what that means? Should I have an easier time or a harder time? So I should be going faster or slower? Slower. Slower. So I can go 10 mile an hour, this current's going X mile an hour. So if the current was going 2 mile an hour, and I can go 10 against it, how fast does it really look like if somebody's standing on the bank and watching me go, how fast does it look like I'm going? If I'm going 10 mile an hour, but the current's pushing against me 2 mile an hour, I end up going 8 mile an hour. Let that sink in. Is it cool? Or if you're at the airport and you get on the little moving walkway, and you feel bionic, right? So you can go whatever speed, and then you add the speed of the thing. Or if you try to go against it when you're a little kid, or maybe me, uh, you try to see how fast you got to go to keep the same speed. Anyway, uh, so upstream should be slower. So my rate normally would be 10, but because I'm going upstream, what do I do that? Okay. No, I'm not going 10 times as fast. Yes, so it's 10 minus however fast the river's going. So if the current was going 10 mile an hour, what's it look like my boat's doing? It's going nowhere. We're like, I've given it all she's got. Well, shit, we're not going anywhere. Let's just go the other way. All right, maybe, maybe. So what's happening on this one then? 10 plus X. 10 plus X. So now I'm going downstream. I'm going with the current. It's going to add to my speed. Sort of like the headwind and tailwind of an airplane, which is why it takes uh, more time to go one way than the other. If you've flown in a plane a lot. Uh, 
what do I know for sure? That's that was involving my unknown. The distance in each case is 24 miles in each case, right? Now here's where people make their mistake. This is a mistake. If you put a five there and a five there, can you explain to me why that's a mistake? Don't don't write that down. And if you already wrote it down, erase it. That would be 10 hours total. You don't know about how much time either one of these took. Which one took longer? The upstream. So I don't know what that is. And don't do this to yourself. Uh, there's two reasons why that's bad. Because it doesn't say that at the same time. But also, why do you want to give yourself more variables if you don't have to? So here's what you do. I really want this understood. Very often you'll know something for sure. You'll know what the number is, the distance or the rate or whatever. You put those in. Then you'll have a variable. You want to, whatever the variable represents, you put those in. You'll end up with these two empty boxes. We have a freaking equation we haven't used yet, right? So what's the time equal to? If distance is rate times time, what's time equal to? How do I solve for t? Yeah, so time is distance divided by rate. So how much time did it take here? Distance divided by rate. What do I put there? 24 over 10 minus 6. My voice goes up in the air. And down here, amazingly enough, I'm going to put 24 over 10 plus 6. I like it. And then whatever the last boxes you work with, that's what's going to lead to your equation. The thing I haven't used yet that I pointed out as a mistake if you try to use it too early is that these two times have to do what? These two times have to do what? They have to add B5. Sometimes they'll be equal to each other. They'll say it takes the same amount of time to go here and there. Then you can set them equal to you. In this case, the total time is five hours. So the time going upstream plus the time going downstream must be five. That's where my equation comes from. And it kind of makes sense since we're in chapter seven. My equation should end up being these rational expressions, right? These variables on the bottom. My equation will be the upstream time plus the downstream time has to equal five. Yes, ma'am. What word that identifies that we have to make it as a fraction? As a, as a what? As a no word identifies that. So the, the parts of the problem that we knew, I know the distance. Therefore, I don't know one of these. I don't actually know either one of them, but I did have variable information here, right? Which means to solve for one of these, I'm going to have to divide. I'm going to end up with fractions. So if it's the distance I don't know, I'm going to have a much easier problem. There's not going to be any fractions because the distance is the multiplication, right? So those problems are easier. You've had distance rate time problems before that didn't involve fractions. They don't all involve fractions. I like it. This one does because we knew this. So to solve for time, I've got to divide. Oh, shit. Fractions. So how do I solve this? I like this because I forgot to do one with a whole number. Subtract the... If you do that, then the 10 becomes positive. negative. It's currently positive, isn't it? Oh, okay. So you can't. They're not. I like the attempt, but these are not yeah. offset by a negative. Both of the 10s are positive. So we have to do it's missing. Yeah, what's this guy missing? 10 plus, plus x. And then the other guy's missing. And minus x. All right, good Samaritan. Are you done giving people stuff? No. No, we're not done giving people stuff because what's the five got underneath? It's got nothing. It's got one down there. It needs everything. And people leave the poor whole number out, and you get weird ass answers. Right? Like my velocity is negative four miles an hour. You're going into yourself. I don't know what that means. So you got to. Give this guy, get him to be the same denominator, right? Everybody's got to have the LC. He's currently got one, so he needs everything. He needs 10 minus x and 10 plus x. Multiply So whenever you have a whole number, you can't just go, oh, that's not a fraction. I'll leave him out. 
You don't get to choose. Everybody has to be affected. So now if I multiply by 10 plus x, 10 minus x, cancels, 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 and then I get Something sort of good happened there, right? Equals. I've left myself no. You guys see this? What is that? In terms of factoring, maybe. The difference of squares kind of thing. So it's just going to be 100 minus x squared. The middle terms cancel. So you get 5 times 100 minus x squared. Let me stop there for a second. You guys see that? Because how do I simplify this? I've got to multiply this out and then bring a 5 in, right? That's what I'm doing right now is cleaning everything up, distributing, foiling, whatever I have to do. So I would foil this because it's like a difference in squares, and then I can bring the 5 in. Maybe, maybe. Of course, this is about the place where you're like, I put enough work in this problem. <laughs> I get that all the time. Again, like, maybe he'll only look up to this point. Let me just put some weird shit here and then go to the next no, come on, you're almost done with this. It's like turning around in a marathon at the 25th month. So, what do we got here? We got on this side, those go away. Now, of course, right here, I could have divided by 5, but we'll see that in a minute. Yeah, so then we'll subtract 500. Yeah, and the one thing you have to be careful about, I know that this other answer won't work, but you better put plus or minus. It's 2 and negative 2. I don't know if you guys remember that. So you want to be doing that shit. Now I know, right now, you have to do what? What can x not be? Negative, right? Because this is speed, not velocity, just in case you know. You could have negative velocity, but not negative can speed. I, can x be 10 in a... No. Not. Yeah, it couldn't be 10. I oh, like uh, And again, why does it make... Again, what, what situation is that? If x were 10, what situation is that that I talked about earlier? If x were 10, if the current was going 10 oh, mile an hour, and my boat's going 10, I am not going anywhere. So how long is it going to take me... To get to where I want to go, infinity. infinite amount. So five. That's why x could not be ten, or negative ten, but it couldn't be negative ten anyway. But x couldn't be ten because I would never get anywhere. It couldn't possibly be equal to five hours. It have to equal infinity hours, right? How long should you get? Infinity. Uh, so I have to throw out the negative. Is two cool? Yes. So what's the answer though? It's saying what's my speed? of the current, so that's good. So my answer is two what? Two mile per hour. Woo! Sorry. Can you explain the velocity thing? I'm sorry, I said it, but very quickly. Velocity can be negative because the negative just means direction. Speed, which is what this is, cannot be negative because speed is just an absolute value. You're going four miles an hour if you're going this way or that way. I'm not going to say, look at him going negative 18 miles. What's that mean? Do you understand? Okay, good. Okay, you actually made this a lot of the chart. Understandable. Sweet. The reason I hated it was the last teacher I had to it really just easy. It's not. I don't understand that. Everything in math is easy. No. <laughs> It's not no, the matrices. They're not easy. Oh, matrices. We're gonna get those. They're awesome. I know. All right. What time we got? Oh, you guys are all antsy because I've been so nice. It's too bad. I, I want to do a little preview of what's coming, and then we'll head out. Let's see. And you just you just gotta get in the seven seven and try. I mean this, uh, and come with questions. Um, Anyway, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time lecturing in 9.3 and 9.4. I'm going to do very quick little uh, stuff because 9.3 is all about graphing lines. Right? Uh, 
So mx plus b, we've already talked a little bit about that. Even the other guy, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, right? The point slope. The rise of a run, you should be able to use this slope correctly. I gave it to you just for review, right? Uh, there's also the idea of parallel versus perpendicular. Two lines that are parallel, what must be true about them? I like it. So the definition of parallel is that they never touch each other. So things get really weird when you go to three dimensions, but let's stick with two dimensions. Uh, but, so they never touch each other, but what's another thing you can say, though? Slopes have got to be exactly the same, right? If one of these was three and the other one was 2.999999, eventually it's going to run into the other guy. Because his slope is not as big, he's going to have a place he's going to run into him. Does that make so? The slopes have to be exact. So parallel, which we use this symbol for, because we're really creative. Slopes exactly the same. Okay. Perpendicular means what? What's the definition of perpendicular? No, 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 no. The definition. Oh, oh. If I just say two lines meet, are they perpendicular necessarily? No, they have to meet at a 90 degree angle. You see, that's a much more, because otherwise it would be parallel and otherwise. Because either they're parallel or they meet. Right. But perpendicular is more specific. It says they meet exactly 90 degrees. So perpendicular, and we're still just as creative. There's a symbol for perpendicular. It actually means. No. We know. <laughs> now, now, I want you to realize this is why I said this this way. The slopes here have to be completely.